People think that rangers suck. That's always been a false claim, and especially now. Rangers are great. The secret of the ranger has always been in the spells, and we'll go over that in some detail with this build I have in mind. The end progression is 5th level for this video. The next video after that, we go to 9th level. There's a few things I wish to talk about there as well. It will be a simple Voom and Gloomstalker with variants from Tash's. Yes, Gloomstalker is the strongest ranger, and that is something everyone agrees on, and for the most part, respects. So I don't need to prove much when it comes to the subclass itself. However, do people actually know what's going on in the numbers? Welcome to Pack Tactics, where everyone has advantage. First, we need to build a character. My concept for this build is Steve Irwin, but obviously a little different. He's a bounty hunter by trade, and on his spare time he likes to hang out with gators. He favors killing people in the nights. Done. How do we determine good and bad damage? We use the Warlock baseline. It's dead simple. Hex plus Eldritch Blast progression. It's self-explanatory. Lastly, this. Okay, you get it. Race, Vooman, plus one dexterity, plus one wisdom, perception skill, and we pick up Sharpshooter as a feat. Ability score with point by 16 dexterity, 14 constitution, 10 intelligence, and 16 wisdom. Level 1, we use all the replacement features. With Deft Explorer, we double our perception. Pick what languages you want. Favored Foe, a separate ammo from spells. Concentration, 1 minute. No action cost, just a simple hit. The first time on each of your turn that you hit the favored enemy and deal damage to it, including when you mark it, you can increase that damage by 1d4. The best part is no action cost, and it doesn't use spell slots. It even scales eventually. People don't like this feature, but I feel as soon as they see what happens at level 5, they will quickly change their minds. Proficiencies, Stealth, Insight, and Animal Handling. I pick Animal Handling because I want to befriend animals. That's RP value. My concept is Steve Irwin again. Quick note on survival. I will get Goodberry to cover most of that, if needed, so I'm not concerned. Equipment, Scale Mail, Two Short Swords, Explorer's Pack, Longbow, and Quiver of 20 Arrows. Your AC should be 16, that's kind of low, so watch out. Get half plate, rapier, shield, and a hand crossbow. Option number two, if muskets are a thing in your game, then you may consider picking that up instead of hand crossbow. Might be pricey though, so watch out. Here are the DPR against a creature with 14 AC. Now the DPR with favored foe. So far, so good. We're above the Warlock baseline. Level 2, Fighting Style, Archery. Your chance to hit with ranged weapons increase by 10%. Spells, Goodberry. Juggle Goodberries all the time. You'll be walking around with 20 Goodberries every day. What I mean by that is you spend all your slots on Goodberry before going to bed. Goodberries last 24 hours so they will still be around when you wake up. If you value Second Wind feature, then you should absolutely love this, for this is better. You can give this to friends too. At this level, I would for sure spend another two slots, so I juggle 40 good berries a day. People complain that all the good spells require concentration for the rangers. That's false. Good berries are the best. You get more out of good berries than Hunter's Mark mathematically, but I will pick up Hunter's Mark next level anyways. Next, Entangle. Chances are high someone picked up Fog Cloud. If not, then pick that instead. These are awesome spells. Damage Control. 70% chance to hit with ranged weapons against someone with 14 AC. With Sharpshooter, it's 45% to hit. You're still above the baseline. 
Level 3, Primal Awareness. You can speak to animals every day. It's one of the reasons why I picked Animal Handling. We could possibly talk our way out of a wolf encounter. That's a big deal. On top of that, all the diplomatic utility use with this is incredible. Befriend all the animals you can. Try to become a better druid in uniting nature to your side. Become Steve Irwin, but better. You can speak to gators too. Gloomstalker, here we go. Let's start with magic. What a list of fantastic spells. The giveaway is Rope Trick and Fear. Both are known as devastating, especially Rope Trick, although it's a slimy thing to do. We won't be exploiting Rope Trick, for I really don't like stuff like that. As for Fear, it's competing with another great spell, and that's Conjure Animals. Yes, Conjure Animals is on the Ranger spell list, and people say Rangers are bad. Let that sink in. Anyways, you get Disguised Self this level. Dread Ambusher. You get bonus to initiative equal to your Wisdom modifier at the start of your first turn of combat. Your speed increased by 10 feet, and if you use your attack action on that turn, you make an additional weapon attack. And if it hits, add an extra 1d8 weapon damage. This is loaded. And you get one more feature on top of this that's even better. Umbral Sight. You gain dark vision of 60 feet. And while in darkness, you are invisible to any creature that relies on dark vision to see you in that darkness. You are invisible for free against creatures using dark vision. You are invisible to about 1,656 out of 2,073 creatures in all of the books combined. They're all swinging with disadvantage while you have advantage all the time. This is a better Devil's Sight plus Darkness combo for it doesn't hinder your team and obviously it's free and it activates automatically all the time with some planning. By the way, you're invisible. You can't trigger enemies opportunity attacks when you move away from their reach. They must be able to see you. If the enemy is standing five feet in front of you, you still have advantage on ranged attacks. They still can't see you. Rules as written. Spell options. Hunter's Mark. Also at this phase, you'll be juggling 30 good berries a day, possibly even 60 if you want to blow all your slots. Damage control. People like big numbers, so let's start with that. This is the DPR with advantage by being invisible at the first round of combat with sharpshooter versus someone with 14 AC. 69.75% to hit. 28.86 DPR. With favored foe, it's 30.85 DPR. Now with Hunter's Mark, it's 34.43 DPR. You are doing damage of an 11th level Warlock at only level 3. That's 28.86 is with no resource cost. Also, that 34.43 almost beats the whole baseline at only level 3. I hope that sinks in. Keep in mind, these are damages from the first round. Here are the damages after that, but still with advantage. Now let's look at that longbow sharpshooter alone again, with no resource cost. In the span of four rounds, how much is the DPR? I got 16.75 DPR. We beat the 5th level baseline early. 5th level baseline is a hard bump. It kills a ton of multi-class builds, and we solved it early at 3rd level. If the free invisibility didn't convince you that Gloomstalker is the best, then these numbers will, and it gets better from here. Level 4, I pick up Crossbow Expert. If muskets are in the game, I would consider picking Gunner instead, but for this build, we go for classic Crossbow Expert. Damage Control, our chance to hit decreases by 5% due to skipping ASI. This is fine. The creature's AC this time is 15. 
our new chance to hit is 65%, and with advantage it's 88%, with sharpshooter it's 40%, and with advantage it's 64%. Let's quickly look at the damage with no resource cost with hand crossbow, sharpshooter with advantage on the first round is 64% to hit, 35.91 DPR. Now we're doing more damage than a 20th level Warlock, casting Hex plus Eldritch Blast for one round. Again, with no resource cost. We shattered the baseline early. After that round, we do a DPR of 21.75. We meet 8th level Warlock after that. Level 5, we get extra attack. We also get Beast Sense through Primal Awareness. Tons of scouting potential. Befriend animals and use them to scout areas of interest. This is very druidic. Tash has made rangers feel more druid than druid when it comes to communicating with nature. That's fun. I'm fine with that. Spell picks. Tons of hard choices, actually. I pick Pass Without Trace to keep this video simpler. I'll talk about Summon Beast in the next video. At this level, you'll be juggling 60 good berries. Spend all the slots and you get 120. I don't recommend doing that at this phase. 60 should be good enough. And conserve the spells for battles. We also get Rope Trick through Gloomstalker. We can do stupid things with Rope Trick. I won't bring it up for this video, for I personally don't like what you can do with this. Damage control. The baseline becomes irrelevant to us this early. This is versus 15 AC creature. Godlike. At level 5, you're doing almost as much damage as a Kobold Battlemaster, but you have 1st and 2nd level spells to far surpass them in terms of combat effectiveness. Shoutouts to these guys, by the way. Anyways, let me remind you, people think rangers suck, but we're not done yet. Now for the grand reveal. Let's look at Hunter's Mark. Boom! Fascinating result. Hunter's Mark does worse for you. So in this build, I made a mistake. I picked something suboptimal. That was on purpose to show you this result. What I should have grabbed was Absorb Elements. Oh well, now you know. Don't fall for the Hunter's Mark trap like I did. Now for the damage every round after that. Pretty much from here, you can do whatever you want. You can multi-class out or whatever. Next video, we continue to level up Ranger, for I believe it's worth the levels to 9. And I explain why I think so. You get the point. Subscribe.